I was totally trapped. From age 21 to 36, Marie was conserved by her parents. I act like I was like happy, but I wasn't. We wanted to hear about her experience of what being under a conservatorship was like. She said her father is conservator was controlling. Well, it was kind of sad. He thought of me a uh, disability daughter. She said as an adult, she wanted freedom, but instead had to get permission for things like leaving the house or seeing friends. Made me feel uncomfortable. Court documents show Marie has a developmental disability from a brain injury and requires guidance in making many decisions. That's why her father and stepmother believed being under their conservatorship was in Marie's best interest, so they could help protect and assist her, court documents show. We reached out to Marie's father. He declined our interview request, but told us over the phone the conservatorship was truly to help Marie and that he will always care about her. I could not have a job. I could not have money. Um, I could not uh, cook. I could not ride a bus without him. So Marie decided to take her life into her own hands. I had to do some research. She found something called a self-advocacy group and began trying to reach out, making calls discreetly. I was just, you know, really scared because I was doing it walking around in my hole at my stepmom's, walking around trying not to get caught. Eventually, Marie got in touch with Suzanne Bennett Francisco, an advocate and disability expert who has become well-versed with those dealing with conservatorships. A lot of those cases come to me, so um, most attorneys won't take the cases. It's, they consider it a conflict of interest because they also um, set people up in conservatorships. With Suzanne's help, they discovered the system had failed Marie in a number of ways. She was under a general conservatorship where all of her rights were taken. Marie had been stripped of all of her civil rights without proper evaluations to make sure a conservatorship really was what was best for her. Those with disabilities being placed under general conservatorships is a problem that happens often and something we've uncovered in previous episodes of this investigation. So they decided to fight her conservatorship. Suzanne began helping Marie navigate this complex system. Step by step, what to do. Like getting the regional center to do an evaluation of Marie, called an assessment, and something that should have been done before the conservatorship was ever approved. It turns out that that um, assessment did recommend that she have some of those rights back. The assessment's recommendation to give Marie more of her rights motivated her even more in wanting to get out of the conservatorship. It cuts me down to make me feel like I'm low functioning. But Marie's voice was still not heard. A public defender was assigned. The public defender spoke to the conservator, Marie's father, and wasn't speaking to Marie. And still the judge never heard her voice. As Marie fought this complicated and flawed system, she added more people she trusted to her team. This was one of the first times she experienced supported decision making. So supported decision making is what we do every day, actually. Um, if we need uh, help or there's something that we feel like we need more information about, then we go to trusted chosen people. She says supported decision making is a shift in our culture to really empowering people with disabilities. And we're seeing this shift for the first time in California legislation. AB 1663 is a conservatorship reform bill proposed by California Assemblymember Brian Mainshine. This bill also would make conservatorship... Uh, at, at heart, this is really a human rights bill. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna put a concept called supported decision-making into law. This will be the first time this has ever been written into law. It's really groundbreaking, and it changes the whole dynamic when it comes to conservatorships. But the bill is also in part thanks to the Free Britney movement. We think it makes sense, we support it. We're proud that Britney shined a light on some of the problems systemically. The Free Britney movement have been incredible civil rights leaders throughout this whole process. Judy Mark is the president of Disability Voices United. The Free Britney movement brought her and other advocates to rallies when Spears was still under conservatorship. And put us out front to say the entire conservatorship system has got to change and Britney is just one example. 
Mark and the Free Britney movement have worked with Assemblymember Mainshine to help create and get AB 1663 through the many steps of making it law. We call this the last civil rights movement because you would never say a person should have all their rights taken away because of their race, because of the language they speak, because of their gender. But now we're seeing people can have all their rights taken away just because they have a disability. The bill aims at changing California's conservatorship system in four main ways. In addition to supported decision making, the bill would require probate courts to prove conservatorship is truly the last resort. The bottom line for AB 1663 is that it makes it harder to get into conservatorships and easier to get out of them. The bill aims at making conservatorships easier to terminate. The individual will know there may come a time when it's no longer necessary and they have the right to ask to have their conservatorship removed. It'll also make sure that a hearing is required at that time on the request of the conservatee. And ensures the person conserves desires are upheld. A judge will have to make sure that the individual has been advised of their rights. Since being introduced in January, AB 1663 has moved its way through the complicated process of becoming a law. Stone? Aye. Stone Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Cunningham Aye. Davies? Your investigation's timing could not have been better for getting AB 1663 passed. At this time of reporting, the bill is sitting on Governor Newsom's desk. Please, Governor Newsom, sign the bill. If passed, it will go into effect January 1st, 2023. But many say we don't need new legislation. We need to follow current law and hold those in charge of this system accountable, like the Department of Developmental Services. Our two-year investigation found this state agency, required by law to protect those with disabilities, has an alarming lack of oversight. Our bill, AB 1663, will definitely hold DDS accountable for the 413 people that they conserve. Between your investigation and AB 1663, people are looking at DDS and saying, why are you conserving these people? Mark says our investigation has already held DDS accountable because just two days before we aired episode one, DDS announced steps they're taking to reform their conservatorship system. That was all prompted by your investigation. But these efforts have just begun because they are being done in private and advocates like myself who've been working on this issue for years were not invited to be involved. For many, DDS's lack of transparency and claiming to make changes but behind closed doors is concerning. This worries the Schutte family, who we introduced you to in part one of this investigation. They wonder if all these changes are just empty promises. Organizations that are supposed to be monitoring and managing and making sure people are doing the proper things uh, and following the current laws, and frankly, no one cares. No one's doing those things. So I, I'm excited there's a new assembly bill moving forward, but if current laws aren't working, I don't expect that will either. But the impact of a broken system and laws not being implemented has already harmed people like Marie. When you conserve somebody, you're basically signing a piece of paper and, you know, and saying goodbye. After a lengthy legal battle, Marie settled on an agreement. She could not get out of her conservatorship, but she could choose new conservators. Yes, they had to be approved by me and by my sport team. Marie chose her aunt as well as an advocate. Just changing a conservatorship is rare. Actually getting out of one is unheard of. Through your work, if you could, you know, ballpark it. How many conservatorships have you seen terminated? Personally, um, one. Uh, well, not even terminated yet. It's Marie's. Yeah. Just one. One out of hundreds of conservatorships Suzanne has witnessed in her years of advocacy. We're almost there. What, the, what is the agreement? We're almost here. The year's almost up. The court agreed Marie would be under a conservatorship with her new conservators for a year and then could reapply to terminate it. What do you think it's going to be like when you're not under a conservator? Man, we're going to have a party. <laughs> I've been investigating conservatorships for over two years now. And throughout this process, we've spoken with experts. What if the violator is a state entity? 
System Insiders. Total disregard for the client's desires. And stood in empty homes, hearing the stories of those heartbroken, having their loved ones taken from them. It's inhumane, just absolutely inhumane. I walked by his bedroom knowing that that's where he should be and that's what he loves and that's what he wants. All because of a broken system. It's almost like he was held hostage, like in, in the 21st century. Broken on every single level. They're not really doing a good job of really overseeing these regional centers. But especially at the top. The state agency in charge of ensuring people with disabilities have equal and fair rights, the Department of Developmental Services is failing. So we'll end this investigation with where we began, with the Schutte family and their message for DDS. Clearly the system is broken, and parts of the system can be fixed here and now and don't require additional law. It just requires people to do the right thing. Please do so.